a while ago, not no, not a while ago, literally yesterday, literally yesterday, uh, I found this channel where we watched the OP, like the, the, our horn, our horns OP, our people OP, shit like that, uh, Tear Zoo, apparently, like, this channel and their, the, like, their vids are really, really good, and I, I just, I just watched it, because I was like, I saw our horns OP, I was like, damn, that's a good question, bro, why we watch, why we watch that, but after watching those two videos yesterday, I was like, damn, no, these videos are actually really good, and, it looks like he does like different tier lists for animals as well. It's not just like, are they OP? But it's tier list on a certain animal. And the first one is a fish tier list. I think, honestly, he probably he probably about to bring up some fish that I never even heard of. But I think the most high tier fish, I mean, it's probably like the obvious answer is like a shark, right? Dante loved your stream and I Carly is but, not pee. But that's probably that's probably like thinking strength wise or like, you know, bite. OP are whale are y'all thinking just biggest i, I think y'all are just thinking biggest fucking uh animal i don't know i don't know how he's judging it but but let's see feel like pharrell in 07 on my uh, shoes ice cream uh, like star stop him out it's a man down what? baby milo custom pc getting fanned out Fuck. not from the block i'm from the h and we don't play around uh, catch him at a red light with a napkin we gonna spray him down leave it all to me just leave it all to me Fish are s spitting. <laughs> Fish can spit and ki spit kills, bro. Okay, that's crazy. This video was made in partnership with Curiosity. But I ain't gonna Stream. lie, they can get one bit. Those those type of fish are too small. Lower lower tier. Lower tier. Fish are one of the most diverse factions in the entire game. They are extremely popular. One fish you could be. What fish would you be? What fish would you be if you could be any fish? Honestly, I want to be a dolphin. Dolphins seem lit. Maybe, a, yeah. It would be either a dolphin, dolphin or a shark, to be honest. I used to want to be a killer whale because that movie Free Willy. But the way the whale sounds kind of weird. <laughs> Among both casual and competitive players and make up the vast majority of the aquatic player base. And with so many different potential fish builds to choose from, it can be difficult to know which builds are actually competitive and viable shark build. in the current build. meta. Give me so the shark today, build. we're going to go through the tier list of fish. This will by no means be a comprehensive tier list. I mean, there are more than 3,000 variants of the catfish oh, yeah, build alone. That. Still, by highlighting the standout builds in both high and low tiers, hopefully I can give you a good understanding of where the fish faction fits into the current meta. You know what's probably a really high tier fish? The, uh... The swordfish, like the fish with the this fucking sword on it for a nose. Them shits, that could be kind of crazy. And if there's a fish I didn't include, hopefully by seeing my logic in this video, you'll be able to evaluate that fish build yourself. What oh, am I also, watching? Also, quick disclaimer, since I've already made a shark tier list, what? I'm omitting sharks from this video. But before we dive into the tier list, first I want to give you an overview of the abilities commonly found in the fish- Oh, so he already did shark, so they're not going to be included in this. ...faction, as well as some background on the history well, damn. of the fish build. Well, damn. Should we watch the shark one? Should we watch the shark one first and then this? Because, I mean, bro, I feel like sharks would be like- I feel like sharks would be at the top of the top. Okay, let's do the Let's watch the shark one first. I feel like sharks- Plus, plus, I think everybody would choose sharks, so. One shark I would want to be. I mean, obviously, people would say the great white. Great white shark is fire. I mean, they just look fire, man. Look at it. They just look scary. Yeah! This is for educational purposes, by the way. Innovations. Worst shark gotta be the fucking hammerhead shark. That nigga look ugly. Made by players have been the main driving force behind the biggest meta shifts in the entire history of the game. And today I want to highlight one of the most important, the implementation of the move bite. There's actually a fair bit of debate on which guilds can take credit for pioneering this move. But there's no question that one of the first to really perfect it to the point of being meta defining were none other than the sharks. And since then, they've been holding on to that top spot tighter than Ice Climber players hold on to a wobbling victim. They've been extremely relevant in every expansion since the Silurian, something very few guilds can claim. 
So today I'll go over the tier list of the sharks, and highlight the main attributes and abilities which have made them such fearsome builds. Overall, sharks are at a pretty good spot in the meta, averaging around B tier. The main benefits of playing a shark build include high mobility, Facts. high damage, Facts. and most importantly, the ability to sense any player near you due to special abilities like blood sense and electro reception. Oh yeah! What main drawbacks electro... include lacking swim bladder, an ability which allows the user to control their buoyancy at will, and also lacking gill flaps. Gill flaps passively regenerate stamina, and is an ability unique to bony fish, so sharks can only regenerate stamina if they're moving. Now let's talk about individual shark builds. Hmm. As always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list and work our way up. In bottom tier, we have... nothing. There are genuinely no shark builds I could justify as being bottom tier. Most sharks don't deviate too far from the base shark concept, which okay. is good because it's a great guide for success. With that said, not all sharks are created equal, and in D tier we have two builds, which don't really capitalize on any of the benefits of the shark class. That, I ain't gonna lie, that shark build, I don't know who the fuck designed that and why that shit was ever implemented in, in the game. But that shit is so ugly. First is the nurse shark. Low mobility, sedentary place. Bro, I thought the, I thought like, that, I thought the sword one was like, I'm talking about the pointy one. That one looks like a fucking chainsaw. And a really weak bite. Instead of abusing the powerful kit available for shark classes, nurse sharks rummage around the ocean floor looking for easy XP. However, they do have the strongest suction force of any fish, and since they don't have many terrible matchups, they're definitely hey, no effort. Yo! Second indeed here we have the saw shark. Saw shark players, what are you doing? Teeth are some of saw, the saw shark, that's what it is. Okay. Best weapons in the game. And the only drawback to using them is that breaking them can ruin your playthrough. Mm -hmm. But sharks have replaceable teeth, so that weakness is completely nullified. So why did you opt for this goofy, cumbersome, impractical weapon setup? Exactly. Swinging that thing around uses way too much Look stamina for what it nets you, Look how and isn't is. very useful for defending yourself. Whatever. This is a horrible build. You do you, I guess. In C tier, we've got all the sharks that decided they'd rather AFK their entire game instead of making use of the best tools available to sharks. This includes the basking shark, whale shark, and any other sh the best tools I ain't gonna available lie, to like, sharks. This includes the basking shark. They shouldn't even be considered a shark. This shit is just embarrassing. The, the fuck is this shark. build, bro? An F -tier shark. What the fuck? Which shark? Uh, it went away right when I was about to look. Like, what? The goblin shark? shark, whale shark, and any other shark who thought filter feeding was a better idea than being a swimming doom machine. Filter feeding. What is a- what is a goblin shark? Yes, it may be easy if you make it to the late game, but without good weapons and low mobility, oh the majority of your playthrough God. is a huge risk, with mo- The shark that gives the gawk gawk- Mobile fish players like the marlin and sailfish having no problem taking you out. Is a huge risk with mobile fish players like the marlin and sailfish having no problem taking you out. Oh my now god. Now we're in B tier and we're almost to the shark builds who know You know how accurate you gotta be with that thing? How sharks are meant to be played. Almost. But first, <clears throat> we've got two more unorthodox builds. Some of my personal favorites, actually. The first is a shark who decided that despite being one of the smallest of its kind, it would attack the largest builds in the game. The cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter sharks are unorthodox in that instead of going for the predator playstyle, they function as a parasite. They simply latch onto a whale or other massive player, and by twisting themselves back and forth, they steal a cookie-shaped bite right off. This doesn't- Oh my gosh! These niggas are little demons! Doesn't do much damage to players, but interestingly, this build was a secret among the shark guild, up until a few cookie cutter players accidentally attacked human submarines, and actually caused their sonar to malfunction. This was during the Cold War, so the Russians and Americans assumed that the other was somehow sabotaging their submarines, until eventually a Soviet sub surfaced with a shark player still latched on. In B plus tier, we have a shark which uses one of Okay, that's a kind of scary build. The only AoE stun move seen in the entire game, the Thresher Shark. Attacking it slaps a sp people and stuns them? Pool of fish is difficult, and due to their advanced evasion and diversion tactics, you have to be fast, lucky, or clever in order to even catch a single fish. That is, unless you can hit them with a flashbang, which is essentially what Thresher Sharks do. Thresher Sharks have tails as long as the rest of their body, and they use them as a whip, creating oh! shockwaves which stun small groups of fish. 
negating their normally excellent evasion abilities. They That's... do all of this without deviating too far from the great base stats of the shark build. What? So they retain decent mobility and attack power while wielding this weapon. Oh, there. In A tier, we finally get to those famous core shark builds everyone knows, That's loves, crazy. and fears. It's hard to rank these in relation to each other because they're all just so darn great. That's a, that's a, that's a cool build, but like relying on a stun in a fight, yikes. I don't know. We'll start with the Tiger Sharks. Tiger Sharks have higher stealth than most of the well-known shark builds and also have uniquely shaped teeth that make them more effective at cutting through armor and bone. I fuck with the Tiger Shark. Similar to actual Tigers, the main strategy of a Tiger Shark is to get close to its target with stealth and then use a quick burst of speed to snatch it before it can react. Nice. On the opposite end of the spectrum from this strategy, we have the Mako Shark, Mako. which has the highest mobility of all the sharks Whoa! and uses this to chase down its targets. This playstyle requires a lot of stamina, so this build breaks the mold and opts for warm blood instead of being cold blooded like most other fish. This gives the Mako Shark the benefits of fast stamina regeneration, allowing it to keep up a That's pursuit terrifying! longer than most other That's hunters. That's terrifying! Since this speed stamina regeneration, allowing it to keep up a pursuit longer than most other hunters. Since this speed comes at a cost to size, look at the mobility stats. That's broken. The stealth needs to like no, honestly, the power needs a buff. Or not 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 but a nerf. If the mobility is gonna be that high, the power needs a fucking nerf. It doesn't quite have the monstrous weight advantage over its targets. And so Mako players need to be careful and not get too greedy. The ocean's other premier speed demons, the swordfish and marlin. See the swordfish? Yeah, that's that's what I, that's what I was talking about. The swordfish is they kind of they kind of scary. Can be tough matchups for them. At the top of A tier, we have the bull shark, which has two unique and powerful abilities. Ooh. The first is that they have the highest bite force of any shark, meaning that even though they have pretty average teeth in terms of slicing and cutting utility, they can still deliver an extremely potent bite. The second ability is that bull sharks can enter freshwater servers without receiving the energy sapping and damaging debuff that obligate Jeez. saltwater builds. Do. This allows them to travel into rivers and streams where they have. In a way, hammerhead is S tier. I thought those were like the worst kind. No real competition. This makes bull sharks the best build for griefing low level players. And judging by the bull shark's reputation for being the most aggressive shark, it's clear that this is exactly the type of player that this build attracts. Damn. And here we are, the head honchos of the shark guild. There's two builds here that occupy low S tier, and honestly- Hammerhead's got a buff? I can't place Since one above when? the other, what is the buff? they're both just awesome. What makes them so excellent is how well they use their tracking abilities, blood sense, and electro reception. The great white shark is no doubt the most feared ocean yeah. in the current meta. Look at that power and mobility! That's- that's crazy. And the closest thing to the god tier Megalodon still in existence. They pretty much just take everything that makes sharks so strong and push all of those things to their limit. They don't have as high bite damage as the tiger or bull shark, but the force of a great white's charge attack slamming into their target more than makes up for it and usually takes the stock no problem. Jeez. Hunting seal players is difficult because they're clever and try to avoid putting themselves at risk when they don't need to. This is why the great white's ability to see above water is so crucial because they can see which islands and reefs their targets are hiding on and camp them out. Yo, do y'all remember this old, obscure... I think they were seals? Seals or some type of birds? I think they were seals. It's like some old seal movie. I think it was, it was a cartoon and they're singing. It was like a singing movie. I don't, I don't think it was Disney either. It was just some cartoon movie niggas made, bro. No, not Happy Feet, not Happy Feet. It was something more like I'm talking about. It was obscure. Happy Feet was like kind of mainstream. It wasn't Surfs Up that because that was the one with um. That was the one with Shia LaBeouf. Damn, they were singing. I don't think they were penguins. I thought they, I think they were seals. Let me see if I can find it, and then I want to see if y'all know what this is. A uh, seals movie singing fuck bruh I'm not gonna find this cartoon I think yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a cartoon movie too old movie bro think of it old movie bruh oh my gosh when y'all see it y'all are either gonna be like oh wow I I, I like vividly remember that or y'all just you've never seen it before because it was like some old movie not Zut I'm talking about it's older than that it's probably like earlier early 2000s 
SEAL team? I don't think it was. I have to, I have to find it now. No, not Happy Feet. Not Happy Feet. It was a, was it SEAL team? No, this was seven months ago. It's older than that. I'm going to try to find it while the videos, while the videos going. Oh my God. Oh my God. I found it. Wait, this was the movie. Chat. Tell me if you remember this. Deep in a frozen country, at the far end of the earth, there's an ancient ceremony where a penguin must find the perfect pebble to give to his future bride. And boy, did Hubie find a pebble. Marina, is that an engagement pebble or what? Hubie, I love it. But Hubie's rival Drake has other plans. Do y'all remember this? Marry a loser like you. Does anybody remember this? No, no, it's it's from Marina. <laughs> now, fate has taken him to the other side of the world. I got just 10 days to get back home before the full moon ceremony. But with the help of a new friend. Who's it's like some old ass a random movie, bro. They'll travel night and day. Yeah, I give it two days tops and you'll be in the belly of anything from a killer whale to a sardine. I'm a good swimmer. You've got eat me written all over you. To try to get graphics. to his true love. I'm destined to marry Marina. Bruh. Marry Marina. Dab, 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 dab. And they'll form a Bro, I'm 16. Nice. You know you don't have to be old to see older movies. I don't know. Like, if you watch TV or just, like, in general, they play older films. Like, you, had, you didn't have to be in... You didn't have to be old to see fucking, uh, like, Boys in the Hood and all that shit. Because it literally plays on TV. And it was like, this was a movie that I randomly saw, like, that randomly was on TV. And I saw this shit. And this shit. You're fabulous. You have to gush like that? That will last my mom forever. Had, you know, my mom had recorded the, my, I don't know, how, I don't know if y'all, y'all probably not in this, this, this old enough. So, my mom, instead of buying DVDs, she would record record a lot of stuff on VHS and on, like, DVDs. Like, literally just record a lot of movies on VHS and on DVDs. And so it's like, I wasn't even... A lot of movies that, when I wasn't even alive when they came out, I watched them when I was growing up, when I was getting older. Because you you, ha you had VHS, chill, Dante? Well, y'all talking about, well, I'm not that old. It's like, bro, this shit... This shit is... This is 1995. But y'all like, I'm not that old. I've never seen this before. Like, you, like, you know? I, I don't know what the fuck y'all know anymore. Look how we get a but yeah, I just remember, I just remember this movie. Um, but nowadays, y'all can just watch shit on stream. So it's like, like on streaming services. So it's like, you don't have to, you don't get DVDs or, they definitely don't have VHSs anymore. Their blood sensibility is through the roof and their electroreception ability is quite poly. Yeah, there, I, I could have remember, I could have sworn there were seals. But maybe I was mixing that with a different movie. Like, what's the one with the seals and they were trying to escape from, like, a shark and they went down, like, a tube and some shit like that? I don't know. Seal chase movie. Maybe that was... That, okay, that was uh, Happy Feet. Okay, I was mixing Happy Feet with that. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about. Oh, he's leaving. Oh, no, that was his face. Or, I thought it was a chase. I could have sworn it was like a chase or something. Some shit. I don't remember. I don't remember, man. So much shit out there. ...as well, but nowhere near to the extent of the last build on my list. The Hammerhead. Wait, what? How big of a buff is this shit? Now, if you aren't a Hammerhead player, I'm willing to bet that when you look at this build, you think the player fell asleep during character creation and accidentally set eye width to the max. But if you think this option is purely aesthetic and not intentional, you couldn't be more wrong. Huh? Hammerheads have the best, most well-optimized sensory abilities in the game. 
They have full panoramic vision and have binocular eyesight ahead and behind them, which gives them a massive accuracy bonus on the attack and a huge evasion bonus if they're being chased. With the chemo and electroreceptors on the front of their face, they essentially have 3D smell and 3D electroreception, Jesus! putting their spatial awareness almost as high as dolphins and bats. Their snout shape also lets them turn Dolphins or bats? Maybe it was just the look. Maybe it was just the look that had me like, these dudes are trash. But they're actually broken. On a dime which makes it so their attacks almost never miss. You mean to tell me if they have Furthermore, dolphin while they don't type... hunt together, they do travel in schools, providing safety in numbers and causing an intimidation debuff on pretty much the entire surrounding area. So that's the tier list for the sharks. That's crazy. As you can see, they're an amazing class with a lot of useful abilities and strengths to play around with. They have only a few bad mashups like dolphins, orcas, and a few other top tier fish like swordfish and marlin. Hold on. I did not know they had it like that. I, I really didn't know they had it like that. Okay. Okay, well then let's check out the fish tier list then. Let's continue where let's continue where we where we left off. So the basic fish build doesn't have much in terms of unique perks. Ain't that or a Pokemon? Abilities, which is actually great as it means that each player has a lot of room for customization. The basic fish build is most famous for its use of the fin and gill abilities. Pass both of which offer huge advantages in water while predictably being entirely useless on land. Back during the Devonian expansion, long before the vertebrate faction had unlocked terrestrial builds. Yo, basic fish build is basically just CPUs. Fish were the top tier build in the game, having a crushing matchup against the top arthropods, their main competitors. In today's meta though, fish have to compete with a lot more than just arthropods, and typically place below the top marine builds like cetaceans and cephalopods. <laughs> and with the nerfs to the Plagoderm armor ability that fish used to have access to, fish have had to get creative with their game strategies in order to survive the current meta. What the fuck is now that? Now let's get into the tier list to see which strategies and abilities are worth specking into if you're a fish player. Let's do it. Seahorses are an extremely- Okay, seahorses are actually adorable. Wouldn't want to be a sea. Wouldn't want to. Wouldn't. I don't know how I feel about this though. Wouldn't. I don't know if I would ever want to be a seahorse. And have y'all seen how they be? Y'all seen a seahorse give birth? Don't they just kind of shoot them bitches out? Strange build with the lowest mobility stat of any fish in the game. This mobility stat is due entirely to their strange choice to spec into the prehensile tail ability at the cost of all but one of their fins. This is crazy to Now, look don't at. get me wrong, the prehensile tail ability can be extremely useful, especially for arboreal builds that use them to tether themselves to trees but while keeping the their water, hands and legs so free for foraging. useless. For a marine build, though, I think there are better choices available. All the prehensile tail does is allow the seahorse to anchor itself to plants and rocks, preventing itself from getting tossed around by the current, which again, it wouldn't need to do if it didn't lack fins. Now, they do have pretty solid armor, which can make them difficult to actually take out. Oh! But their extreme lack of mobility means the seahorse cannot dodge attacks. This leads them to getting smacked around by any player who feels like it, Stop! even ones without any special combat perks. And with their best match- Oh no, that's bullying! Come on, they're literally already at the lowest of the lows. Being their build is already so to trash. Me, there's no way the seahorse places any higher than F tier. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's literally like picking on like a blind person. Like, leave it alone. Sunfish. Also in F tier, we have the ocean sunfish. What the fuck? This probably isn't too shocking, given that the sunfish is famously bad at defending itself. But for those what is this build? Where the ocean sunfish has the highest HP stat of any fish in the game. Really? And relies on its giant size for protection. Similar to the seahorse, the sunfish's other stats are all extremely low, and because of this, the sunfish gets bullied hard by many of the common marine threats, Aww. both large and small. That's so they get torn up. to bits and tossed around particularly badly by the mammalian player base. Sea lions and orcas in particular love flexing their superiority over the largest fish build in the game. But the sunfish has another huge weakness, parasites. See, the sunfish has soft, mucus-coated skin instead of the scales traditionally used by fish players. This makes the sunfish more vulnerable to parasites, which unfortunately means that even the best sunfish mains have to play while suffering from a wide variety of debuffs from parasite infestations. I ain't gonna lie, if I had to choose to main one of these, I'm choosing the seahorse. I, I, you know, you can bully me all you want, but at least I got good armor, a good armor trait. You mean to tell me, like, you gotta worry about parasites and shit like that? 
There ain't no fish doctors. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? The sunfish players often solicit the help of support mains like the Ross and Shrimp to help cleanse themselves. Oh. And may even sit at the water's surface to give bird mains the chance to attack the parasites. Oh shit, okay. The gigantism strategy is usually a pretty reliable strategy for avoiding attacks. Elephants, whales, hippos, and rhinos are generally safe from attacks once they reach their max size. Yeah. However, I think in order to make the strategy work, you need to actually be able to strike back to discourage repeated attacks. True. Otherwise, you're kind of just a damage sponge and yeah. will have your HP slowly whittled down. You can't fuck as with we elephants. Often see though. happen to the sunfish mains. That's a different. So, because of all these topic. vulnerabilities and over reliance on support players for help, I have to place the ocean sunfish in F tier. I agree with that. Flying fish? The flying fish now is that's a build crazy. with an extremely unique playstyle centered around maximizing mobility. That's crazy. By putting a huge amount of evolution points into their fin trait and mobility stat, they've actually gained the ability to glide through the air for surprisingly long distances. This is useful as an escape option when being attacked by a larger fish player. However, as unique a move as this is, I actually think this is a pretty poor strategy overall. Being and kind of useless as a fish main. Unless, like, unless you can, like, get some food, uh, maybe find a way to get food out of that. It's literally just for defense, just to get away. Airborne might put you out of range of an attack from another fish, but it's by no means a safe position, and in many cases, is actually seriously disadvantageous. Without any way to dodge attacks midair, flying fish are extremely vulnerable to bird oh attacks, my God! which kind of nullifies the benefit of escaping an aquatic pursuer. I ain't gonna lie, with a trait like that, might as well be an F tier, Jesus Christ, bro. What the fuck? And in addition, with no way to change direction midair, oh! it's actually not that difficult for said fish player to just intercept the flying fish's landing. So overall, not that useful of an ability, tacked onto an otherwise unremarkable build. Salmon. Also in D tier, we have the salmon family, which includes the fish builds like the trout and the char. This. I mean, isn't this what humans begin? build actually has some pretty impressive stats with high mobility being pretty much required so I, de I definitely wouldn't want to be this in order to withstand the constant rushing flow of the rivers you you're literally you're the, literally a target for the most op players in the games respawn points similar to the flying fish this playstyle is also highly vulnerable to disruption from non-aquatic players as impressive as it is that salmon and trout mains are able to make these insane jumps, the sad truth is that the thing that they're most well known for is being an easy source of XP for carnivore players. Easy, now, easy XP. I mean, XP for fun, bruh. Now, this jumping ability is also useful for attacking flying builds midair, but the salmon's power stat isn't quite enough Double to be able to kill. take down anything that isn't far below their weight class. At the bottom of C tier, catfish. we have the catfish. One of the tankier builds on this list with a bulky yet versatile stat. I don't like how catfish look. A lot of players undervalue the catfish and see it as low tier trash due to it being a bottom feeder. Y'all be eating Not catfish too? that they've actually got a few decent unique abilities, most important of which is their venom. Rather than specking their fin appendages to do things like flying or flexing, the catfish builds spec into fins that have barbs on them, which can deliver a venomous sting. While their venom usually isn't able to deal lethal damage, they got it's still venom? a decent defensive ability. It does have its weaknesses though, particularly to long, disjointed hitboxes, such as the spear-like beaks oh. of some bird builds. Nonetheless, the catfish is still a reliable and easy to play build, being omnivorous and able to gain plenty of XP simply by digging through the mud for scraps. Box of scraps. The archer fish is this the spitting one? Also in C tier we have the archer fish. The only fish build with the ability to use a ranged attack. This build is kind of cool. This projectile deals essentially zero damage, <laughs> but it's by no means useless. Oh, damn. This projectile has high knockback, making it excellent for pushing players into vulnerable positions. You have a zero damage, though? A waterlogged though? insect is one of the easiest targets in the game, and being able to force that type of interaction is an extremely powerful ability. Nice. This ability does have its limitations, though. As is the case with most projectiles, this attack is unusable in the water. Oh. Meaning that the archerfish doesn't really have any good moves for PvP against other aquatic players. I think the biggest weakness of this playstyle, though, is the position that you're forced into in order to make use of your projectile weapon. Being near the surface of the water leaves you vulnerable to both attacks from below and above, and with no defense against either, the archerfish is a high-risk, decent reward build. Still a cool build, though. Human XP. In B tier, we have human the builds XP. that are generally solid picks, 
but lack any truly overpowered abilities. First is the bass, the poster child for the phrase big fish in a small pond. With solid stats and the ability to grow larger than most other freshwater There's lake some fish, cool stats. the bass can easily dominate their local scene, even to the point of depleting the area of resources by gobbling them all up. Their generalist nature and large jaws mean they can prey upon just about anything from smaller fish to crustaceans to even builds like frogs and alligators. Whoa, what? While there's not that much that's flashy or unique. Wait, how big are they? There's no denying that the bass is a consistent threat in the pond meta, and I consider them the gatekeepers of the higher tiers. That's not bad. Alligators? Also in B tier, we have the fish faction's premier support class, the Cleaner Ross. The Cleaner Ross specializes in cleansing larger fish players of parasites providing an extremely useful service in the form of removing debuffs from any fish player in need. Respect. Similar to the oxpecker on land. Parasites are a major threat to fish players, so it's no surprise that oftentimes even top tier builds like sharks will add cleaner Ross players to their party. Oh, that's kind of cool. You have to rely on the a support, to a support main? And while betrayals Anybody want to be a support main? Dr. Fish. Dr. Fish. Swimming into a mouthful of dagger-like teeth is not without risk. <laughs> what the fuck, mate? Muscalon? Alright, now we're in A tier, and this is where things start to get a bit overpowered. First, we have the Pickerel Guild, which includes the Pike and Muscalunge, the most fearsome freshwater fish in the game. What? These oh. vicious fish builds are highly aggressive and attack anything in or around oh, their domain, shit. from fish to birds to mammals and even humans. What? Their powerful jaws sport sharp crocodile esque teeth, which deal serious damage and grip their target, preventing their escape. But it's not just about power with these fish. Their slender body Speed, and camouflage fast. allow them to easily hide in cover, waiting for the perfect ambush opportunity. Wow. And unlike trout, when these fish jump, it's not just to clear an obstacle. They jump to attack. Their only weakness <laughs> is a slow growth rate and long respawn timer. But even at low levels, these fish are adept hunters. While not part of the Pickerel Guild, I also include the Barracuda in this same rating, Ooh. as they have a very similar playstyle. Barracuda. Giant size is not a requirement to be a high tier predator, though. Gotcha. As exemplified that is by true. the next build on this list, the Piranha. Oh! No, Piranhas are broken maniacs. They're broken maniacs and too many spawn in one area. Too many spawn in one area. They gotta they literally have to nerf that shit. The spawn rate at which piranhas appear is ridiculous piranhas are one of the best if not the best example of how with the right combination of special abilities and team strategies size genuinely doesn't matter their special ability feeding frenzy, i almost forgot about these little fuckers Piranha shoal dps to one of the highest in the game able to look at that melt through the hp of even the tankiest targets broken in contrast to the salmon <gasps> trout, because of their favorable <gasps> matchup against larger players piranhas are the only no! fish build on this list that I think actually make great use of its positional advantage in oh, rivers, God. as many mammals and bird mains will be forced to cross your territory over the course of their Twitch, this is for educational purposes. playthrough and fall victim to your frenzy attacks. Their main weakness is a lack of defensive capability, mm. meaning that they can still be easily one-shot by other predator players. Damn. The next build on this- Look at his eyes. Tier list does not share this- Yo, I feel like the little boy in Jurassic Park. Look at all that blood. <laughs> weakness. Lionfish. The lionfish is one of the most well-defended fish builds in the game, relying on a huge arsenal of venomous spines to deal serious damage to its Venomous attackers. spines? Similar to the porcupine build Ooh, on land. Porcupines are broken. Because of this- Nah, the they're not really broken. That's actually a good- that's a good build. Lionfish is an infamously sense. unpleasant target to attack, and most predator players- This is a crazy build, bro. Actively avoid them. Like, how do you even know- how do you even allocate your, your points to the right place to get this type of build? Poisonous, like. While their other stats are quite low, look at this. this certainly thing. hasn't stopped them from rising to dominance in their home server of the Indo Pacific. Lionfish are also generalists who gobble up anything that their low mobility stat allows them to catch, which can quickly deplete a. Did you see the shadow? Who gobble look at up the little guy. That their low mobility stat allows them to catch. He was literally frozen which can with fear. A server of its resources. And because of their quick respawn rate, lionfish have rapidly spread to other ocean servers without much pushback. Oh, no. Nah. At least until they reach the tropical Atlantic. See, there is one fish build that has been able to consistently take down lionfish. Who? Oh. And once I show you how broken some of their abilities are, okay. it'll be easy to understand why. We've oh! got two more builds to showcase in S tier. But real quick, I just want to point out that eels. this is the longest video I've made so far and took a huge amount of time and research. No, eels 
That trait, that that electric bullshit, that's how. How is that even fair? This is to produce. So if you're enjoying it and want more content like this, please do consider subscribing. E Thanks. Yo. The moray eel is one of the most uniquely powerful fish in the game. With a set of strange yet highly functional abilities and well-placed base stat allocations. So first, their stats. While the highest aquatic power rating falls to sharks and whales, a close runner-up is the moray. Their teeth resemble broken glass and can do similarly brutal damage in combat. Their mobility is surprisingly high for a fish that lacks pectoral and pelvic power, defense, and mobility. Look at that shit. Fins. But in addition to having great and maneuverability high, in the tight spaces of a reef, Look how they they're move. capable of some pretty impressive bursts of speed too. Their stealth may seem low due to their vibrant coloring, but honestly, bright colors are everywhere in reef servers, so they don't stick out too much. In fact, their ability to contort and fit into crevices and other tight spaces gives them a pretty huge advantage for ambushing other players. Oh, that was fire. Where things get interesting, though, is with their defense. The Moray has a slime-based special ability, which serves multiple defensive purposes. It protects them from taking abrasion and puncture damage while passing through sharp coral and oh. jagged spaces within the reef. But perhaps more surprisingly, it's great at deflecting damage from things like teeth and spikes. Not only does this give them a great matchup against sharks, but it also makes them one of the only builds in the game capable of taking down the lionfish. This excellent matchup spread makes placing the moray eel in S tier an easy decision. Billfish, that's the, the sword. Final build that's on this the, that's the sword one the I was thinking. Billfish. This includes the marlin, swordfish, and sailfish. That's the, that's what all I was of thinking which about. Have similar play styles. This group is top tier for two reasons. First is that they have the highest swim speed in the game. Look at how fast and because they just literally sp they, they 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 literally spam sword attack. They are literally spamming the same move, beating out not just all other fish but also mammals and birds. In addition to having unmatched speed. Their large dorsal fins allow them to make tighter turns than Look most at fish, that. Too, uh. making them extremely good at chasing down prey. Their most unique trait, however, is their bill, one of the strangest offensive abilities in the game. Useful for both slashing and stabbing, this attack is one of the few in the game able to hit multiple targets at once. This makes it This is There's someone on YT named Coyote Peterson, and his channel is. Oh yeah, I used to watch this shit. The worst fights and stings on the animal planet. Yeah, I used to watch his uh, videos. I don't know if that's Twitch friendly. Excellent for countering the ubiquitous safety number strategy many fish players adopt, and since the billfish hunt in packs, they can rack up insane kill counts, rivaling the hunting prowess of even a pot of dolphins. With busted stats and a signature move that's both flashy and downright broken. To me, there's no question that the billfish Actually is broken. the most overpowered fish build in the game. Regardless of where your favorite fish build falls on the tier list, one thing's for sure. My favorite fish build, build, I, it's literally the sword one though. I, I said that, I said that before I even knew that they was even going to be in this video. I talked about that in the, in the shark video. So you can't say that I'm a bandwagon. You can't say that I'm a bandwagon with that build, bro. Because I was literally uh, going to pick that. But it would have been that or after seeing this, probably the uh the electric eel like an electric eel is cool adaptation is key to survivability in the current meta and it's important to seen eels breed they swim to the bermuda triangle and breed there then return it's a mystery that's being researched to this day wait really always be exploring new strategies to stay ahead of the curve where's the squid the same can be said for youtubers and this is why a bunch of creators Squids, have started an experiment called Nebula, a new platform that gives us the freedom to pursue the projects we want Without needing to fear demonetization. I mean, you gotta give Stingray, you gotta give Stingrays their credit. R.I.P. But like, they took out a human build. Nation, nor optimized for YouTube's desired metrics. In addition to posting ad-free versions, but I guess sharks be doing that shit all the time though. Versions of all my new videos days in advance on Nebula. There's all. Dude, I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize this was an ad until I seen uh, chat saying it. I thought I, I thought an ad was running on my stream. Also, hours of original content <laughs> that you can't get anywhere else. <laughs> on top of my let's play outside bro series, he literally just I've be talked about before i've also recently put out a podcast he literally just be like throwing them throwing them the bitches in there okay so last one for the day the the last uh tier zoo video for the day we watched the we watched the fish ones fish tier list but one i really want to see one i really really want to see is the cat tier list my favorite cat my favorite cat that i have to choose is the cheetah cheetah's mobility Broken. Cheetah's mobility broken. And I like how they look. Cheetahs just look fire to me, bro. 
Cheetahs and Panthers. Yeah, Cheetahs and Panthers, but Cheetahs were like my all-time favorite. Tigers, Tigers are cool too. Right, so in my video on dinosaur builds, I casually referenced the fact that cheetahs are low tier. <gasps> How dare you? I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, man. I would understand why they would... Bro, like, I literally just said how I like cheetahs. And now he's talking about how everybody was on his ass because he said they're low tier. Make the video again and do it right. I'm watching. Which ended with me getting a ton of comments from angry cheetah mains asking me to explain myself. I'm a cheetah main, bitch. Fix your tier list. And you ain't analyze right. Fair enough, I probably should. But instead of just making a video on cheetahs, I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone by also finally releasing the tier list for the cat dynasty. First, let's talk about the place cats as a whole are at in the meta. So I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that cats are exceptionally effective builds mm -hmm. that have held a high tier spot in the meta for more than a while. Their agility, And though this high. isn't true of every cat build, of which there are more than 40, cats carved out their spot in the meta by being the best choice by far for anyone looking to play an assassin or rogue class. Their weapons and movement kit are carefully crafted to allow cat players to have an easier time scoring critical hits on their targets than most other carnivore players. Facts. Like I said, there are more than 40 different builds possible, so I can't really fit them all into a single video. So instead, I'm gonna go over the most popular ones, and hopefully the way I analyze them will help you make your own call if you're interested in one of the less popular builds. So anyways, I'm gonna start from the bottom of the tier list and go up from there. Right at the bottom, we've got the cheetahs. They have the highest movement speed. Why is he, what dude? How you make a video talking about how people was getting on your ass about talking, putting cheetahs in tier list, low tier list, and then kind of like, actually kind of like just brushing past it just to put them in an even lower tier list, bro. This shit just hurt my feelings. Talk about it, bro. You have any land build which is definitely an impressive title to hold. When it comes to scoring kills on builds with high mobility like gazelles, antelope, and ostriches, there are a few better at it than the cheetah. But while this works against those particular targets in that particular situation, it serves no purpose when it comes to actually defending the kill. And as a result, a high percentage of the kills a cheetah gets end up getting stolen by lions Oh man, I guess that's true. Yeah, I mean that's true. And as a result, a high percentage LOL, of the kills yeah. the <laughs> end up getting stolen by lions and hyenas. Damn! She does need higher power and defense. End up getting stolen by lions and hyenas. She does need higher power and defense stats to actually be able to reap the benefits of their high mobility. All right, my second choice was the tiger though. Ability. The cheetah's inability to defend itself makes the early. Yo, come on, bro. Look at this. Armor, crocodile scales, snail shell, rune pl plate body, frying pan on PUBG. A cheetah's hide is lower than the frying pan on... <laughs> this is so fucked up, bro. The game extremely difficult for new cheetah players, too. High-level players can't prevent stronger builds from griefing the new cheetah players, and as a result, very few cheetahs even reach the late game where they can abuse their high mobility stat. Long story short, F tier because they get bodied way too hard by competing builds. In D tier, we've got the Lynx. You got it, dog. I don't have too much to say about them. They've got low medium stats across the board with the exception of stealth. And they do possess one relatively useful ability. Honestly, Lynx just look cool. To move silently That's all it snow. is. They're best at taking out small prey using stealth. They just look but in cool. my opinion, there are better choices for this type of playstyle, such as the Owl or the Viper. While they don't get griefed nearly as badly as cheetahs, they do have to watch out for cougars, wolves, and coyotes. One can't, level higher and Can't you get a cougar. lynx as a pet? While like, it's with is proper licensing and some shit? Actually a bit lower Yeah, the lynx, lynx do look like a, a All other stats are a and it's a cool high, name, too. Especially strength. Cougar! However, it's not quite strong enough to overpower midweights like deer and elk without putting itself at risk for taking damage, too. Damn! Well, it can climb pretty well. That nigga's getting cooked! It's most comfortable duking it out on the ground. I've never discussed troll builds on this channel, but honestly, the trolling potential with cougars is too good not to mention. Cougars lack access to the roar move, but that doesn't stop them from trying, and as a result, they have one of the craziest battle cries in the game. Instead of actually being useful as an intimidating sonic AoE, it instead sounds almost exactly like a woman being brutally murdered, which is one of the few ways to seriously mess with human players that invade their territory.
wait, that's terrifying though. It may not be intimidating, but it is terrifying. There are two major styles players opt for when going for a cat build. But I think that's only terrifying to human builds because of how it sound what how it sounds like. But I'm pretty sure like other cat builds just are laughing. Like, what the fuck is that shit, bro? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go eat that shit. I don't know. That just sounds stupid. The feline style and the panther style. All of the builds so far have been in the feline style, which generally. Where did I hear this beat from? If you like these tier lists, you have to watch Casual Geographic. Casual. Ellie has higher. Okay, I'm gonna write that down and uh, look it up. And look, look it up another day. Look into it. See if it's see if it's got potential, man. What is it? Here, hold on. Let me open up. Casual Geographics. Casual Geographics. Higher mobility, but lower strength. Panther style cats, on the other hand, are stronger, bulkier, and also have access to the panther signature move, Roar. Roar. So we're finally going to switch gears over to the panther builds as we continue up the tier list. What the fuck is this shit The from? leopard build is the next rung up on the tier list, being Africa's premier solo rogue class. Of the panther style builds, this is the smallest. This offers the leopard players maximum mobility while climbing. Whoa! The trait they use that shit's crazy! Not only well, that, but how they than the cheetah, it is how they the attack and like grab it, like take their kill up into the trees too. You know what strength you got to do for that? No match for gank squads like lions and hyenas, but unlike the, the baby, cheetah, leopards the... actually have a way to avoid getting their kill stolen. Oh my! Leopards can climb much better than any of that's a baby right. You know how much strength, strength you need for that shit. The tree. This allows them to gain all of the XP they deserve. All these traits together earn the leopard high B tier. Now we're at A tier, and this is where the tier list gets a little money, since we've only got two tiers left to place quite a few more builds. If I'm being honest, even though I placed Leopards in B tier, the Snow Leopard players, with their extra stealth bonus, have a strong argument for A tier. Anyways, at the bottom of A tier, we have the largest of the cats, the Tiger. Not many unique- The bottom of the- whatever, I'm up there. At least my build is up there, bro. Two of my builds is up there. One, very, very low at the bottom. But Tigers- Tiger's cool. Abilities, but generally just dollars. very high stats. The song is from Tony Hawk, it's imaginary places by bus driver. While Tigers do have decent stealth, they rely more on their sheer power for winning fights. Which Tony Hawk? This allows them to take out tough and dangerous players like the boar. One top tier ability they do have is their incredibly powerful jump, making them deceptively mobile while Damn! at average speed. Overall, if the tier list was <laughs> simply about who a split? You gonna we we gonna split that? Would win in a one on one fight. Tigers would be S tier, oh, no doubt. Yeah, Tigers easy. Unfortunately, that isn't the case because even though they'd lose in a one on one fight with a tiger, lions are undoubtedly more viable overall. Yeah. If you watch my videos a lot, you know I see coordinated attacks as one of the most overpowered strats in the whole game. Yeah. And lions are basically the poster child for coordinated attacks. Lions are so cool, bro. So far, most of the other cats we've talked about. Lions are so cool, but I just like the way tigers look though yeah i don't get i don't get how lion is an s but he probably got some knowledge we don't know about all generally target players playing squishy targets but lion players are some of the only ones bold enough to deliberately attack a tank yo this nigga's literally shitting on itself bro they're highly organized parties they only ones bold enough to deliberately attack oh my a tank. god they're highly organized parties they form allow them to control entire sections of the map and their defined roles prevent leeching and also protect newer players from gankers. All in all, great build, easily A plus tier. And finally, we've reached the top tier, the build that embodies everything excellent about the Cat Dynasty, the Jaguar. Mm. Jaguars are the absolute best build in the entire game when it comes to one-shotting players with a critical hit. Really, the Jaguar? They have the most damaging bite of any of the cats, enough to pierce armor and their incredible accuracy lets them nail their target right in the weak point, the back of the head. They that nigga just took on a gator? He just took on a gator. They win. I ain't never seen no lion do that. I get it. I got it. Incredible accuracy <laughs> lets them nail their target right in the weak point, the back of the head. They may not have the raw stats that the lion and tiger do, but they more than make up that for power their special abilities. And stealth is crazy. The most important is their incredible eyes, which negate all stealth bonuses. Cracked. Most cats have great vision and can even see in darkness, but the jaguar can even see a target obscured by camouflage or hiding in murky water. 
The second, That's less obvious perk is that Jaguars are the most versatile cat build available. They're great sprinters and pristine climbers, but they're also just as much at home hunting in the water as they are in a tree. No other build can boast dominance in the arboreal, terrestrial, and aquatic map zones. They really do dominate. Lions act like they own the place, but they do face plenty of competition. Mm. But Jaguars, they do own the place. Damn! They could carry their food up a tree if they wanted to, but there's no need. So yeah, a build that can want- They can carry their food up the tree if they wanted to, but there's no need, cause who gon' fuck with them? That's hard! One shot anything on its server and dominates three of the four main play zones. That's your S tier. So there you have it, the tier list of the cats. Damn! Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, did I forget something? Yeah, you buggers are getting your own video. The cats? The kitty cats? The cute little... The cute little kitty cats? The cute little kitty cats, bruh. Bro, there's a... Hold on, I'm not even gonna look at these. But that... That was... Those videos are so good. The, the vid those videos are so entertaining, bro. Alright, chat. Let's wrap this shit up, man. Let's wrap this shit up. Alright, so...